how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Uh, just, I, I said it a few weeks back, but uh, like watching Passion of the Christ or something like that, um, like how do you not get emotional? You know, it's, it's one thing to like say, yep, Jesus died on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord. You know, um, we kind of do that at dinner when we pray, have Zoe do our um, prayer at dinner and we say, you know, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. And it's sometimes it's kind of like saying I love you to a spouse. You know, I, I love you. And you just, did you mean it or did you say it with, you know. Um, but when you really like, when you see the images of what took place, you know, what theoretically took place, because um, of course they, it's a movie. Uh, but uh, we were just last night reading a uh, little uh, action Bible, action Bible? It's the action Bible. We have an action Bible and an adventure Bible. And the uh, action Bible is kind of a comic book of Bible stories. And even then, I was, I, Kelsey took a turn, and then I took a turn reading. And I was getting emotional just looking at the pictures of, of Jesus, the drawn Jesus beaten with a robe over him. And, uh, and then we sing, and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Again, he did that for you, me, everyone in this room. He died for you. He was beaten and put on a cross for you. And we'll never, we know how much it costs. It cost Jesus life. Uh, but uh, I, I truly mean it. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, for taking my wrongdoings, my sin, my stupid decisions in life, and dying for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Let's, uh, let's worship him this, this morning. Let's uh, set a fire. I ask Jesus, set a fire down in my soul. Let's, uh, let's praise him.
Way to go, way to go, gents, gents and ladies. Hey, how you doing, buddy? How are you? Good to see you, man. Good. I'm good. I think. Is our fire raging? Is it too warm down there by the... You know what? I was sitting with Dayton. He asked me if the fire was real. It was just after Jeff had lit that candle, so we smelled the sulfur and stuff from the matches. I smell real fire. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. Just the time. That's funny, man. All right. That's enough. That's enough friendliness. It's enough friendliness for one day. No more, no more friendliness. Back to normal grouchiness. All right. Uh, hey, how are we doing, everybody? Welcome, uh, one and all. We'd like to welcome those of you that are joining us online. Um, so we, uh, years ago, we did a campfire thing. We had a campfire right out there, and I kind of walked around out there. But now I think because of the microphone for the interwebs, I, I should probably stay put. And uh, that way you'll feel safer, too. So uh, let's just try to create a little atmosphere with our fireplace. And I hope it's not too warm down here in the front terrible i know it's, that's just that's just terrible are you disoriented now that you're in a different spot though that your seat has moved all right some people think that that's good we need to mix up your seats and change things around on you i don't i don't get hung up on that but if your seat if your seat has been moved can you still receive the word can you still worship can you still worship the lord okay that was an honest question i was just checking all right so to create our our atmosphere we'll have the lights a little lower but if I see you sleep, I told Patty, if I, she's like, how do we know if they're sleeping? I'll just say, they're sleeping, turn the lights up. And hopefully really quick, bam, just right away. Um, so we'll just, it's a nice, a nice mellow, what can he say, chill by the fire. Okay, so, um, so we are, we began last week a series on better. Oh, let's do, uh, we, got a, we got a video, right? All right, we'll follow up on our couple here. Welcome back to the Research Labs of Better. Let's join Martin and Julie again on their first date. Um, do these jeans make me look fat? Uh, they look right. Oh. <laughs> nice. Ooh. That one might end up ugly. Let's see what it looks like with them. Um, do these jeans make me look fat? Look great. When life hands you choices, choose them. Everybody. Okay. All right. Um, ladies, any comments on that? Uh, I showed a few ladies, and they're like, yeah, he still paused a little bit on the second one. It was a little better. Was anybody thinking that? He had to give an honest answer, though. If he just robotically says, oh, no, it's great. I don't know. Who, know, who knows? Come on, right, guys? We, who, who knows? We're, we're doing our best. All right, so, uh, so we're talking about better. We want to have better lives, have a better year, um, and just live better. So we're going to get into this this morning. Um, I just pray your hearts are open this morning to hear what, what God might have to say. It might be easy to dismiss this idea and just kind of say, well, you know, okay, that's, that's nice. That's a good idea. But I want to encourage you to take this seriously and... Um, and allow God to maybe speak to you and speak to your, your heart and mind about, about what we're talking about. So um, I, I could say it this way. Like, we will learn this lesson in life. We'll either learn it now. Maybe we've already learned it. But uh, we will learn this lesson. Uh, it, but it might be on our deathbed we might learn this lesson. It might be when it's way, way too late we might learn it. So 
I want to encourage you if this is uh, maybe an area that you struggle with, maybe you don't even know that it's a struggle, um, then we want, to, we want to help you out this morning. There's so many, I'm getting new thoughts in my head that, that, that aren't in the outline, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Um, so, we'll, so we'll learn it one way or another. So uh, maybe um, uh, it's either our human nature or maybe, maybe it's our culture that says, you could probably help me finish this phrase. If one is good, then two is better. I'm glad you were able to help me out on that, right? So don't we kind of have that mindset? If one is good, then, then two is better. So if having a, a one dollar is good, then having two dollars is better. If having one car is good, then having two cars is better. One, if one house is good, how much better would it be to have two houses? If one base, wait. <laughs> Scratch that. That was a Freudian. <laughs> Never mind about the basis, all right? So, so that, does, that doesn't apply here. Um, you say, well, you know, you, you've got a few. I would have more if I wasn't so disciplined and spiritual. Anybody help? Anybody help? Anybody? Anybody help? All right. Uh, if having one child is good, then four is better. And if one wife is good... Two is not better. Amen. Right. Two is not, two is not better. So, um, so I'll, we'll take you to the garden. So many things we need to do. I think we need to do a series on just the Garden of Eden and everything that happened there. So many ramifications. And I don't know how many messages that I, I've talked about in the last, over the last year that we keep going back to the garden and like it, it kind of all starts there. We can understand so much by that. But if we, if we look back at the Garden of Eden, the serpent, uh, without, without reading the actual text and quoting it, the serpent essentially said, well, let's go back first to what God said. God said, everything in the garden is available from you. Take and eat from, from any tree. You can, do, you can do whatever you want. The sky's the limit. But there's one thing I'm asking you not to do. Some say, why was it a, a tree and why was it a, you know, why was it a fruit? Uh, what, what's inherently wrong with the fruit? I think the idea is just that God gave them everything and in their sinless nature, um, they, everything was available to them and they didn't do crazy stuff. And because of free will, he gave them one choice, just the only one thing out of everything else they could possibly do. And, uh, and so the enemy comes along and the serpent comes along and essentially says, you know, you've got everything. There's nothing really that's been forbidden for you. You can have everything. You can eat from any tree. But there's the one thing that you don't have. And if you ha only had that thing, your life would be better. You'd be better off if you had that one thing. Imagine um, Adam and Eve having so much available to them. And, uh, and only one. Yes. Can I get the ladies to give me an amen or something? Right. I've always taken books about Eve, right? Eve ate the thing. Yeah. Well, maybe she was deceived, but Adam was a rebellious jerk. I give you everything. Uh, you Maybe it's that third piece. Times just what you have enough. That's, that's what one way or another. And it's not all that things that we pursue. Those are the kinds of things that we chase after. 
Um, those things on the list that we would describe and others have described as not being the most important things. So how can we live this kind of life? How can we live a life that is, uh, as Solomon described, that it's better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with strife and, uh, what was it, strife and, oh, chasing after, chasing after the wind, or toil and chasing after the wind. Um, all right. I don't know. I, so I, I came across this article uh, several weeks ago. And, and it, uh, it, was a, it was a thing, I think it was called, it was really interesting. It was like uh, six American values, something like that. So what, what, what's um, a value that we have in our culture? And, and these, we'd probably recognize each one of these six things. And the way this was laid out, it was actually, uh, the first thing was, I think, um, yeah, the first thing was independence or, or uh, indivi individualism, right? And so this author went on to say, well, and it was written to like immigrants, folks that, that came here from outside the country. And it was like, here's, here's what you're kind of gonna, what you're gonna encounter. Americans will usually use the word freedom, that freedom is important. And get to know that word because Americans are big on freedom. But probably it's more accurate to describe what they're talking about as individualism. And so this author went on to say that, that you know, because of reasons we won't get into here this morning, that, that we're very individualistic in our culture. And so I think, well, maybe if one is good, then two is better. I think maybe that's human nature. Maybe it's just us, right? Maybe, maybe it's just Americans. And so they said, you know, the king and, and all that stuff and the revolution and, and really kind of how we came to be, that we really want to be left alone. We want to stand on our own two feet. And uh, there is a price to pay for being individualistic, right? So we here in the body of Christ, we're in the United States, but in the body of Christ, we understand there's a balance between standing on your own two feet, and that, that's, I think that's a powerful thing. It's, it's, it's worked pretty well. It's worked pretty well so far. But we understand that we need others at times too. And so this author went on to say that that is part of the reason why we want to consume more, 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 more. Because if I have to borrow your thing, if I don't have the thing, if I have to hire somebody to do the thing, then I'm really not, really not free. So I have to own all this stuff because I think that if I own all this stuff, then I'll be free and I can, I can use it whenever I want. I was telling my good friend Jim McDowell about this. He has a leaf rake. You know these leaf rakes that you pull behind the yard tractor? And you see on TV that it, 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 they just they mow through, they go through the, the yard and there's it's full of leaves and then it leaves a green trail wherever you go. You ever wondered if that's true? It's totally true. Totally, it totally works. Those things are awesome. And so I used that last autumn, last fall. And it was amazing. Thank you so much for letting me use that. I was, and I was sharing some of these ideas with Jim. And he's like, hey, do you want to borrow that again? I said, no, I bought my own. <laughs> he caught me. Busted me with my, own, with my own sermon. He busted me. Now, I can appreciate that on, on some level. I, under, I, I understand the mindset. I'm not completely against it. But I want to ask you the question this morning. Is it true? That if you own as much as you can possibly own, that that makes you free. I think that probably is why that's a part of our culture. I think that's probably accurate. And individualism, again, I'm not completely against that. There, this thing went on to say, like, America is part of our culture, that you need, to look, you need to get to figure out how to stand on your own two feet. But there's a price to pay for that. They went on to say, by the way, this doesn't really, isn't necessarily part of the message, but I thought it was interesting and, and helpful. Um, and I've talked about this before, and I've, I've, I've known this for many, many years, that other cultures seem to, other cultures do uh, appreciate and respect the elderly. And in the United States, it's not, that's not the same. It doesn't, it's not exactly the same thing. And this author went on to address that. And they said, because elderly are usually uh, very often retired and living their twilight years and, and just trying to kind of take it easy and, and live a, a pleasant retirement, that something in us, you didn't know you were this bad, but I'm going to tell you about this dark thing that maybe was inside of you, that they said something that we see somebody that's not working and we go, nah, 
I can't really get behind that too much. Like, we're not cruel to the elderly, I hope, um, but we don't treat them like other cultures do. And at least it was this author's assertion that it's because they're not working. They're not doing, it doesn't matter, they work their entire lives. Um, they're, not, they're not working, and so, so we see them somehow a little less. So you answered the question uh, how I thought you would. I, I, I do think, and I, I appreciate the author, I think the author is pretty accurate. Um, I'm not sure that it's true, no, I'm sure it's not true, that the more stuff we own, the freer we are. Like if I, you know, if I have to drive a couple miles to the McDowell's house and get this thing that they're not using, like that's just, that's just too much for me. I just can't bear to, you know. Um, I just can't bear to do that. So I have to, you know, I have to, get, I have to get my own. Is it true that that makes us more free? I would suggest to you that it does not because when we're in debt and when our credit cards are maxed out, and when we're constantly stressed about money, and this author, by the way, did go on to say, but Americans are also stressed out. Um, they're, they're uh, uh, you know, um, having heart attacks and, and whatever else is related to, to stress. Like, that is a problem they have. You know, they've done surveys, and they've looked at other countries that, you know, like a happiness level. And happy, we're not, like, number one in the, on the happiness scale. I know that might be hard for you to believe because... We're, we're swallowed up in debt and the pursuit of things that, that may not matter. So I want to uh, give you some ideas this morning of, of how we can maybe overcome this. The first thing, well, let's take a look at Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 12.1 says this. I love this passage. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a, such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, right? So there's a lot of things I love about that, that verse, but we'll focus here on this. Um, let us throw off everything that hinders. And the Greek word for throw off is actually um, like to violently throw down. I think, of, I think of the guy going in for the touchdown and, you know, spiking the ball or something. It's, that's sort of the attitude. It's not like a oh, I'm going to miss you thing. You know, it is like, get off of me, right? That's it's kind of the idea in the Greek. Let us throw off. It's a violent throwing down. Um, so let us get rid of everything that hinders us. And, and, of course, sin that so easily entangles. And one of the things I like about this verse is we often go to sin. Like, sin is going to entangle you. I think we talked about that maybe, maybe last week, that, uh, that sin is a problem. But we often don't recognize that let us throw off everything that hinders us. So things can hinder us that aren't sin. There might be things that are not that bad, but it still hinders what we're trying to do, right? Then it goes on to say, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So here the, the author tells us that there is a race marked out for us. There is a run that we are in. There is a marathon that we are a part of, so to speak. There is a track um, there is a purpose in our life. There is a, a God's will and a, a direction that he wants us to go. There is a plan for our lives. But things can entangle us. Things can get in the way. Things can cause us to focus too much on the things that really don't matter instead of focusing on those things that do matter. So Hebrews encourages us to let go of some things. All right, so let's talk about that. We could have some fun with this. I'm not going to spend too much time, but it, it would be kind of fun. I'm um, going to give you three ideas about how we can approach uh, maybe the next week, month, years, the rest of our lives, and things that we might be able to do. So um, first is cut back, then we'll talk about throw out, and then we'll talk about turn off. Cut back, throw out, and turn off. Um, I probably don't need to say much about these, but cut back. Um, so many people uh, are, are, could cut back on their spending, right? The things that they spend their, their money on. And also, this is interesting, our schedules. Our schedules. Um, we jam our, our day and our, our lives with so many things. We are constantly, constantly busy. And I want to encourage you to prayerfully look at your schedule and prayerfully look at things that you could 
maybe cut, cut back on. Uh, not saying get rid of it completely, but maybe you could cut back on that thing and then spend more time with, oh, I don't know, let's say family. So, um, you, know, you know, preachers only work one day a week. How many of you knew that? Preachers only work one day a week. Right. And uh, my question to you is, what's that day? Because Saturday for a preacher feels an awful lot like work. Like I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky guy, but I'm my grouchiest probably on Saturday. Then Monday, I'm pretty good. Tuesday's okay. And as we get closer to Sunday, stay out of my way. Because, um, you know, my head is full of what, you know, I got so much I got to do. I got this to do. I got to come up with it. I got to prepare the sermon. And uh, so, so, I don't know, my family's probably learned after some time, like on Saturday, just leave that guy alone. It's like poking the bear, right? It's, I don't think I'm that bad. Anybody? Family? Anybody? All right. Doesn't, okay. Uh, somebody, some, there's, a com, there's a comment from what might be considered the front row. Um, so yesterday, my youngest asked me to do something, and I went, it's Saturday. <laughs> I've got, my day is, is full. Like, my day is full. I'm working on this sermon about getting rid of dumb things in your schedule and spending more time with your family. I don't have time to do that thing with you. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. It is kind of funny. Do you think I said that? only to get a laugh out of you, or do you think it was probably actually true? <laughs> yeah, it was true. Uh, so, uh, so I took her somewhere, and, and I was still like, hey, we don't, have, we don't have a ton of time, right? Like, I got a lot of things I need to get done. But I was so proud of myself <laughs> that I took a little extra time, and uh, did I stay? I didn't stay. No, I just dropped her off there. Um, <laughs> but she needed a ride home too. She needed a ride home too, right? So, tr I'm tr so I'm working on it. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. But we jam our schedules full of stuff. I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider um, and look at ways where you might be able to free up your schedule. And, and it might be in our mindset that, like, if you take five minutes, then maybe... You're unproductive and lazy, right? Because I think Proverbs talks about that too, right? Talks about sloth, talks about being lazy, talks about, uh, you know, uh, not, not producing, not participating, not uh, actively being involved in the life that is around you. And so we're not talking about being lazy, uh, but we are talking about, it, it was just incredible to me reading that, going, okay, I just think that's me, but maybe it's just the culture that I'm immersed in, and, and maybe... Uh, then that means if it's, if it's, if it's just kind of the culture I'm immersed in, then maybe I really can find ways in my schedule to, to, to have less of maybe what, what doesn't matter and to, to invest more time in those things that do matter. So, so I'm looking at that. You've heard it said that we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Yeah, obviously, right? <laughs> Um, so, so better is less with room to breathe, right? Better is less without, without the debt collectors beating down your doors. All right. Um, we hear, we often hear, hey, you know, how you doing? Um, well, you know, I mean, I'm just stressed. I'm just, I'm just stressed out. I'm so busy, right? Anybody ever like what? Like I recognize that even as I'm preaching this, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not preaching this to you because I have learned the way, right? Like, but, but maybe it's actually possible that we make ourselves busier than we need to be. Yeah. Maybe there really is room in the schedule. Like, mm -hmm. it's like the heavens just opened up and we heard angels singing and the Lord himself spoke and said, you can find the time to do those things that are most important. Wouldn't that be amazing? And if someone's not commenting how busy they are, they often are talking about how tired they are. You don't usually, you know, say, hey, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm so relaxed. 
right? Like, I'm just so chill. I mean, I'm having a date night with my wife every single week. The kids, we've got game night. We're playing. We're hanging out. We're spending time together. Again, I'm not condescending to speak just to you, right? Like these are things. This is for. This is obviously for me too. Um, I used to think the preacher spoke from authority, like he's got it figured out. So now he's going to tell you. That's. <laughs> There might be two sermons here at Lakeside, right? There might, be, there might be two that are like that. Usually I'm like, ooh, that's good. I need to do that. I probably have to tell others about it too, right? Um, I'm, so, I'm so tired, right? Um, so maybe, maybe like I'm just spending, you know, I can't stop reading the Bible. I'm getting all this time in with God and prayer, right? You see, you see where I'm going. So one is cut back. There's some things that we can cut back on. Um, then throw out. I won't say much about that, but you've seen the show Hoarders, right? Like, does anybody, are you like me? Like, if you see the show Hoarders, then you want to go and just throw stuff away. <laughs> and usually get mad at your other family members, right? Is that you? Do you? It's not you? That's just me? Okay. Because um, all my stuff is important, but I can't believe everybody else is hanging out of this trash, right? Um, so I heard, I heard an idea. Uh, I haven't done this, but I like this idea. And Alex is always like, let's throw more stuff away. Let's get rid of stuff. You know, uh, her generation, the, the minimalist thing. And uh, so, so I heard this idea, throw away weekends. Throw away weekends. And so they would just pick a number. The, number, the n- number I heard, you won't believe it. It's ungodly. It can't be true. It, I, I like the idea. I don't like the number I heard. Maybe it was just a random number. 200 things. No. Uh, right. Uh, now, now I am stressed, right? Now I am stressed. You want me to throw away 200 things? And look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I know this ruins the message maybe, but uh, how many times I've thrown something away? Yeah. Yep. I don't even want to say it. It's got to be the devil, right? It's got to, it has to be. And I need that thing. And you know what's really bad is I throw that thing away and forget that I throw that thing away. So now I'm looking for it and blaming other people. What'd you do with that thing? And then I realize, like, oh, yeah, I threw that away. And then I got to go buy another one. Oh, that hurts. Maybe that's, maybe, but maybe that's just us. Maybe, maybe other people throw it away and they go, then a week later when they need it, they go, oh, I'll go buy a new one. Help me, Jesus. Right? Like, Help me. I, I, that's, that's, that's tough, but I have the dumbest things. I have a lot of dumb things. Still, I'm trying, but can you imagine 200? So maybe we start off lower. What's a number we could handle? One. <laughs> One. I could come up with, yeah, tw- I was like thinking oh, 200, maybe 20, maybe 50. Uh, and if nobody's watching, we'll make everybody else do it, and I'll hang on to my things. Um, but are there some things that we could get rid of? I don't know, I, you know. I see, in Bible school, I used to hear people, I haven't heard this much since, but I used to hear people say and describe a poverty mentality. And I think, I don't know, I think that's what that is, a poverty mentality. Like, I've got the thing, now I've got the thing. It cost me money, if I throw it away, now I'm losing money. But you can increase the square footage of your home, and then you got the bigger house, right? Um, when, so we just moved uh, almost two years ago now. We had a smaller house. And you know what we did to get more square footage? We, we bought a smaller bed. Bought. We bought. I heard it as soon as I said it. We bought. We bought a smaller bed, and it made our bedroom bigger. <laughs> Amazing, right? Um, you can get rid of stuff, and you don't have to maybe buy the bigger house, right? Uh, I know. I stopped preaching and started meddling a long time ago. All right. Um, so Nikki says, throw away weekend 20 things. Um, and that doesn't probably count for like the leftovers in the fridge that have been sitting way in the back for weeks. I don't think that counts. All right. But could we, could we get rid of some stuff and uh, make life easier, right? Okay. So I don't have to talk much about that. I think you get the idea. Um, and if you need inspiration, just watch that show, man. And, you know, have the Pepto-Bismol sitting there. You might need it. It's pretty gross. Like, why do they keep, why do they keep showing? Why do they keep going back to the toilet that doesn't work? I get it. I don't need to look in that anymore. Um, it's disgusting. All right, so throw away. They do, like, they, you're just, they're just torturing me with that. Um, all right, so throw out, and then turn off, right? Turn off. Uh, television, cell phone, can you imagine? So I did a survey once. It was like a thing online to see if you're, and then I just had a generation, what? Generation, what's the, what's the last one? Generation Y? Generation Z? Yeah. 
couple, I've heard a couple different names, a Generation Z person uh, began to suggest that I was addicted to my phone. And I said, aha, I took the test years ago and said, I'm only partially addicted. Thank you very much. I'm not completely addicted. Um, and so she began to interrogate me. Interrogate, this is Generation Z kid, right? One of Tori's friends. Uh, so she began to ask questions. Well, do you do this? And I'm like, she said, oh, I think it's not fair. It wasn't fair. She was cheating. But she's like, is it on you right now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then I'm like, it's yours. You know, like a baby, <laughs> it's yours. Um, but I did pretty good. Then she started, she got into something. I'm like, no, 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 no. And her eyes got big. And, and first it was in disbelief, I think, like, he's lying. Um, but, but, but years ago, I, I think it's probably, I should look one up again and, and make sure that I, I still, I, I passed, but not by much. Um, and, and I think one of the questions that she asked was, if you left the house and didn't have your phone, would it freak you out? That would, right? We've gotten used to that. Like, what if I, what if I have, you know, what if I need it? I was riding the motorcycle the other day uh, and uh, a couple weeks ago and had a flat tire out in the middle of nowhere. The phone was pretty handy. Would it freak me out to leave without it? Yeah. Could I leave it in another room while I'm at home? So I do that sometimes. It's not always on purpose, but I do it sometimes. <laughs> Hey, this isn't about me. How do we, we get talking about me? I thought we were talking about you, right? Are there some things that we could turn off, uh, uh, get, a, get away from? Somebody said this, you'll never change the world by watching reruns. I like that. You will never change the world by watching. Look, does the Bible say you can't watch reruns? No, it doesn't say that. Might I watch a rerun? Sure. Uh, do we maybe spend too much time Doing that, that's, that's between you and, and the Lord and your, and your family. Um, but I know recently I've, I've tried, I'm watching less TV and uh, you know, just looking at my phone more, right? Just replace it with something else. <laughs> but, but, you know, you could, you could free up a lot of time by doing that. Spend some, spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in God's Word. Spend some time with... Uh, people or whatever's on that list you made of things that that really really matter could we turn some things off I don't want to talk about the cell phone anymore I want to move on <laughs> right like it's getting so warm in here like did we I can't I don't know what's happening here it's my, all right um, so what did we say cut back throw out and nobody was listening <laughs> and all right I have to look Turn off, turn off, yeah, turn off. All right. So get rid of those things because tranquility is better than two with toil and strife and stress and chasing after the wind. And then I will encourage you to fight for what does matter. Nehemiah, when there were those that were trying to, to talk God's people out of rebuilding the wall. He said, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And he went on to say, and fight for your brothers and for your sons and your daughters and your wives and your home. My guess is on your list of things that matter. Maybe family was on there. Maybe close friends were on that, on that list. Nehemiah encouraged his people to fight for those things that really really matter. I want to encourage you that not that watching this or having that is a sin. We're not saying that. Like, I'm not throwing the cell phone away. All right. So that's not going to happen. Uh, there's more than one TV in my house. Can you imagine? Like my parents were around when this thing was invented, right? Like that's, that's pretty wild. And, and now there's, well, let's just say there's more than Now I spent the money on them, and I'm not watching them. What's going on? Like I said, I'm cutting back, but I still, maybe I'll try to take them back. How do you think that will work? That's not going to work. Um, but garage sale? Yeah. I tried to sell a giant TV one time, but because it was this thin and not this thin, it was garbage. Right? Like, oh, you have one of those fat TVs. 
Those things are old, you know, like we don't want one of those fat TVs. We don't want the really skinny TVs. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so let's move off that. Um, but fight for what really matters. We can waste our lives on things that don't really matter all that much. Let's have less in our lives of what doesn't matter and more of what does matter. Your life is too valuable. Your calling is too great. Your purpose, too awesome. And your God is too good to just waste our lives. Let's, let's go to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you for sharing with us that it's this passage and there are others. We talked about what Jesus said, to, to be aware, be, be on the lookout, to watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Lord, uh, we need to be reminded of this today. I don't think we have a church. Uh, I don't know everyone intimately, but I don't know everyone who's watching online, but I don't think we have a place filled with greed. But Lord, I know that, that something tugs on us. And there, there is this lie that says, if one is good, two is even better. And Lord, uh, we can all be seduced by that from time to time. Lord, I pray that by your spirit, you just minister to each and every one of us and that you would help us learn areas and ways that we can cut back, that we can maybe throw out and, and we, can, we can turn off some things. And then we can fight and invest in matter. Lord, I pray for Sometimes having more is just having more and even can make things worse. Lord, I thank you that, that you'll minister to each and every one of us. And Lord, I just pray that, that everyone here within the sound of my voice will, will take a serious look and will not just, as we said at the beginning, say, well, okay, that, you know, he makes a, a, a good point there. Um, you know, that was, that, was a, that was a decent message there. But Lord, I pray this morning that, that we allow you in the searchlight of the Holy Spirit, search us. And that you would bring to our attention, bring to our minds areas and ways that we can get into a lifestyle that, that recognizes, I hope we recognize the tranquility that comes with one hand living. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your help on this matter, setting us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. all right. Well, are you blessed this morning? Oh, yes. All right. It is warm in here. It was the fire. I wasn't wrong when I felt like it was warm. Thanks for laughing, Jenny. Or Jenny's like, I better laugh. Nobody else is going to. <laughs> All right. Kenny, do you have anything to share with us this morning? Yeah, we got, uh, we got some announcements. Most are in the uh, bulletin, but I'll kind of hit them briefly. We'll try and go in order. So if you're taking notes, you have it chronologically in order. I know everyone when they talk, but it's kind of paper ready. Um, on Tuesday, November 9th, uh, is the Lakeside Envision Encounter. Um, again, it's in, the, it's in the bulletin, it's just uh, kind of talking about financial business and kind of sharing some future plans. So if you plan to attend, uh, take that date down November 9th, 7 to 8.30, Tuesday night. Um, then we have, there's going to be a men's work day. It's not in the bulletin, so this one you might actually need to write down. Uh, men's work day, November 20th, 9 a.m. It's a Saturday. Um, we're gonna 
do some work outside, I assume. Yeah. So that, that's uh, some, some hardcore manly work. So bring your tools that you went out and bought because you didn't want to share other people's tools. Yes. Um, the Maddox. It was Dan. We talked about this beforehand. It's, it was all part yeah, of Yeah, uh, perf per perfect. Yeah. But uh, there's a sign-up sheet out there if you can sign up so we know how many helpers are going to be there. Uh, then we have a Christmas celebration, December 12th. Um, that's like a Christmas program. Uh, that'll begin at 7. That should be pretty cool with uh, some some seasonal music. And uh, the, so special we, numbers. Yes, special numbers. Yes. A little different than what we do on Christmas Eve. Um, this is a different little program. Uh, then there's also a sign-up sheet out there for, at the Connect counter for the Christmas candlelight dinner. Um, it looks like we have enough people that we're probably going to do it, but still sign up if you plan to attend or want to attend because it would be nice to know for sure how many people are here or would want to be there. Uh, and then, uh, actually, uh, Jim Whitehead has an announcement about uh, men's breakfast. Oh. voice rings out and says, no, I'm the manager of this ice hockey rink. Nice. <laughs>
Now, I have spoken here a number of times about the Marxist movement in America, and I don't know how many of you have, have ever seen uh, my presentation on Marxism in this nation, but uh, I want you to reflect on whatever you know about Marxism. As I go through this presentation, and, and I think what you're going to see is that there is a propaganda war that is going on right now in America. And COVID is a battleground. COVID is what's being used to make you and me be afraid. To make you and me become compliant with everything our government tells us to do. Everything our elected leaders tell us to do. But they're conditioning us to do it by using propaganda or psychological operations. And I'm going to go through some stuff. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I'm going to come to the end and then I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes about Afghanistan and what we did and didn't do in Afghanistan. And then Rick and I are going to take a couple of questions at the end of it and we'll talk about those things. So. Big propaganda program. Look at this. Any student of military history will tell you wars don't just happen. Wars are always foreshadowed by a propaganda operation intended to soften up the target, wear people down, and weaken their resolve to fight. Is that what happening in America? Wear them down, soften them up so that they're pliable, so they'll do whatever the government tells them to do. And here's, in simple terms, here's what this is all about. Most successful operations come down to a simple strategy. Identify your enemy, segregate your enemy, isolate your enemy, and then annihilate your enemy. And by the way, does anybody know where that strategy came from? came from Saul Alinsky in a book he wrote called Rules for Radicals. Remember Saul Alinsky was the guy that dedicated his book to Lucifer, the original radical? Saul Alinsky, who, by the way, has influenced presidents of the United States, one in particular. Saul Alinsky, this is basically the strategies being used against the enemy, and who is the enemy? Huh? All of you. You are the enemy. You are the enemy of this strategy that is being used. You're the enemy because ultimately you were, you recognize a higher power than the government. If I was to put a label on that clip, I would put Marxism something in the COVID. You guys know what it does, it's just good and it runs like about an hour and a half, but at the end, it does go into the question and answer session. He just repeated. He had the military guys in the audience, some active and some inactive. Basically, asked, what are we going to do? And he goes on later on some active ways that we get involved to take back on the So, I just, guys, if you want to hear what's current, what's, what's happening, if you've ever been frustrated, the only thing we do is, as a citizen, we need to go to the game and get in with Gave an edit in the recording of last season. So, next Saturday, 9 o'clock, breakfast. Thank you. Thank you. Great man. And then uh, I just got one more, it's not really an announcement, but uh, today is the last day of October. And while, okay. <laughs> while many people associate that with Halloween, um, I'm going to associate it with the final day of Pastor Appreciation Month. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so again, uh, we truly appreciate you, Pastor and Pastor's wife. <laughs> so with all those faults he admitted to right. the, the best pastor joke, which he said during a sermon, is that they only work one day a week. Um, and even though it's funny every time we say it, um, <laughs> and he loves it every time. Not every time. Um, every time. And there's, there's actually so much more that goes on behind the scenes that uh, maybe 
you know, I don't even know all what, what he does. Um, but uh, to name some, there's uh, like the phone calls for prayer, the hospital and house visits, uh, weddings, funerals, uh, and for our pastor, the bass playing. That's maybe one of the more important ones. Yes, I know. <laughs> but uh, sure. uh, really, he's, he's shepherding the Lord's people. And uh, that, that deserves so much appreciation. Um, so again, if you haven't done so, um, there's only a few more hours left to appreciate Pastor. <laughs> then you can pile on again. Yeah, once, once the calendar flips, then we're, you know, back to normal. That's what's right. Right. midnight tonight. This is as usual. Once, once it's um, and also his, his mommy, uh, Toy Petty, uh, has made one of his favorite desserts. Um, I'll, I'll leave it up as a, as a mystery. It's a mystery dessert. I almost <laughs> mentioned it in the sermon. It doesn't sound it's good, yeah. but, uh, it's a mystery, guys. Do you have a guess? I have a guess. I'll be embarrassed if it's wrong. Okay, then don't do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't want to do it. Is it, is it something that's upside down? I don't know if she knows. No. It. Is, it, is it the no. thing that takes a lot of work? It wasn't. Yeah. No. Like, that's perfect because no, everybody thinks that they hate that and they'll leave more for me. <laughs> they think they hate it. So yeah, we have them out in the cafe. If you're uh, if you're interested in the mystery dessert, uh, they're she made enough to share. So yeah, so. that was actually my first guess, but I thought no way did she make that much. Of it. All right, so I wasn't gonna. I thought about saying this, but uh, I know we're kind of running late here. But if you look in you know the scriptures, the the Greek word uh, for pastor and like leaders, we translate sometimes we translate it pastor. But it's also translated as elders, uh, or, or yeah, uh, or elders in the scripture. So, really, when you think about elders, and the Bible lists, you know, those that, that are elders uh, can be elders. The qualifications for elders, you could just say pastors, other pastors. So, we we tend to have a, a senior pastor, but elders are pastors too. So, I thought if you said something about pastor appreciation. I want to make everybody aware still that uh, I neglected to do this earlier in the month. <clears throat> My mistake. Jeff and Becky, our youth pastors, extraordinaire. Uh, make sure you let them know. Give them, give them some love. And also, uh, Jim and his lovely wife, Joanna, are elders here. Now, we, we had other elders that, that moved on and they're not around. So, um, Jim and Joanna have been elders for... Uh, a while, and uh, so we want to recognize him. Yeah, she's not here today, right? So, uh, but uh, let's have you for your time. And uh, and then I don't know. It's been I don't maybe six months or something. I thought well, there's got to be a good time to announce that uh, we also spoke with uh, another couple and asked them to be asked them to be elders. And somebody said, well, uh, you know, can can a lady be an elder? Um, some churches say no, I, we say yes, um, and if you don't think that a lady can be an elder, you can have a Bible challenge with one of these ladies and see how you, <laughs> see, how, see how you fare, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but I talked to this couple who graciously agreed and have been elders now for quite some time. That shows you how old I am, because they're younger, these elders are younger than me, but Kenny and Kelsey, our new elders. So, so let them know. Since we didn't focus on them all month long, maybe we can make next month. You know, pick on, pick on, not pick on. That's the wrong word. Um, you know, let let these folks know that you appreciate them too, because they do they do a lot. Um, they really do. But time does not permit. So, ha ha! You brought it up, Kenny. So, and after service, Kenny and Kelsey will be up here to pray with you should you have needs. Get it? All right. Uh, all right. That's all. Uh, no. <laughs> um, thank you for remembering us in your giving. I'm not going to say any more about that. I don't think I need to. You guys are so faithful and good about giving. Um, thanks for those that, that give online. That's really incredible. Um, someday I will believe that that's even happening. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have thought that could even happen. Let's be honest, I would have started this online stuff a long time ago. <laughs> well, I didn't think anybody would watch it either. So, 
Uh, so we, we appreciate you um, and are grateful for your giving. You can give here in person, you can give online. You probably know the drill. Let's close with a song. Great, All right. Great, Chris. Yes, sir. <clears throat>